Okay, well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our today's webinar, which is Option 101. And in a few minutes, I'm going to uh, make John the presenter. Uh, just a quick heads up, this is a, one of the first webinars in a series of webinars that will try to focus on trading that is outside of day trading. So we're going to have the option, options webinar, uh, continuing with future spreads, advanced options, and a few other topics. Uh, a little bit about Canon Trading for those of you who do not uh, know us well enough. Uh, we are uh, offer a wide variety of services uh, from the self-directed online trading offering more than 10 different platforms, broker assist, uh, trading systems, manage futures, help with algorithmic trading, hosting, and much more. Uh, <clears throat> before I introduce John and pass him the mic, a little bit about the risk disclaimer. As you can see on your screen, uh, this is risky business, futures trading in general, option trading in specific. Uh, you must use risk capital. And the bottom line is if you don't have risk capital, do not trade those markets. These are risky markets, and past performance is not indicative of future results. Okay. Uh, any questions that you guys have, feel free to type them during the webinar, but we will have a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. Uh, if I see that the question is relevant and, and per, in, important to the flow of the webinar, we'll uh, get John's attention and go from there. Uh, John Thorpe is my colleague and also a senior broker here in Canon Trading Company since 2002. He started as a floor trader on the Chicago Board of Trade back in the 70s. And he is a wealth of information when it comes to the commodity markets, trading, options, and many other different strategies. So give me just one second and I'm going to go ahead and make John the presenter and we can get uh, going from there. Okay, and looks like John is now, we see in John's screen. So go for it, John. Hey, thank you, Elon. Hey, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for spending some time with us uh, here this afternoon at Canon Trading. Um, let me pull up my uh, PowerPoint. I don't know, can you all, can you see that, Elon? Can you see the first? Uh, okay. I'm going to move uh, some stuff around over here. There we go. Uh, thank you for attending Options 101. And uh, our first uh, PowerPoint here is a quote that uh, none other than Charles Darwin has uh, given us the opportunity to enjoy. And it is not the strongest of species that survives, nor the most intelligent that survives. It's the one that is the most adaptable to change. And as uh, if you've got any experience trading futures, you know that's what that's what we do. We deal with change. We attempt to adapt to change. So a little about who I am and where I come from may be helpful to you. Uh, beginning in 1977, at the age of 18, I spent my first five years on the floor of the Chicago Board of Trade in the grain room: uh, beans, corn, wheat, meal, and oil. At the dawn of what can be called ramp growth in the futures industry. Financial futures were just being developed and the Hunt brothers were attempting to corner the precious metals markets. The Kansas City value line was the first pit traded equity index, soon followed by the CME zone offering of the S&P 500 index, of which most of you are probably aware of. And we're going to do a little example later on about uh, uh, how to use weekly options or how to identify weekly options uh, in the S&Ps uh, to your benefit. But not to be outdone, the competing Chicago Board of Trade, the granddaddy of futures trading, was beginning to corner the market on interest rate futures as the other exchanges focused on equity futures. The CBOT created 90-day commercial paper contracts, Ginnie Mae futures, the 30-year bond, the 10-year note. And after spending nearly four years away in the early 80s to pursue a university education, I returned to the industry I realized I could not leave. From the first opening bell on the floor of the exchange in 1977 
listening to the passionate roar of humanity, the physical positioning of the sea of stakeholders in the pits, I knew I needed to, in any capacity, continue to work in this intriguing industry. Immediately after graduating in 86, I was a broker at Dean Winter Rentals, arbitraging life bonds against the 30-year bonds and bond options in, at a time, the largest futures trading pit in the world. I had worn many hats in the industry since, from risk manager to registered option principal in the securities industry to VP of compliance at two top five Wall Street brokerages, and most recently, since 2002, here at Cannon in Beverly Hills as a senior broker. We're here to help you, and we're here Monday through Friday to discuss anything and everything about the futures market. So please allow us to demystify, in plain language, the futures and futures options markets for you. So if everyone is ready, let's begin. Can you see that slide, the options basics for the beginners? defining the futures contracts, economic justification, nominal value, leverage. Uh, I think uh, most of you, if you've uh, traded futures, probably understand you know, how they move and what they are and the leverage that you employ and the nominal values, which are really critical uh, to understand the ultimate leverage that you have. When I talk about nominal value, I'm simply talking about, uh, let's say, the S&P index at uh, 2050 you know, multiplied uh, times its multiplier, which is $50, the nominal value, nominal value would be 2150 times 50, or $107,500. So, you know, that's a, that's a pretty big contract, and that's the mini size contract, one-fifth of, of the large contract. So it's, it's important, I think, to understand uh, as we trade futures and also options on futures, what nominal value is and what that means so you understand what kind of leverage you're employing. Um, economic justification for, for a futures contract is, is that they were developed to provide uh, some, some price stability for end producers. You know, in the 1800s, uh, uh, wheat farmers uh, were feast to famine. In the springtime, uh, there uh, was not a whole lot of grain out there. Prices were high. So they'd buy as much seed as they could. They'd plant and uh, come harvest in, in, in July uh, through the Midwest. Uh, there would now be an abundance of wheat, and the prices would plummet. And they had a hard time uh, functioning. Farms would go out of business uh, 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 on a regular basis. Uh, the advent of the futures uh, contract helped uh, the farmers uh, spread out that price risk, uh, economic justification answered. You know, why, why options? Uh, I think when we, we talk about the risk associated with uh, futures trading, we take a look at uh, uh, the option market, and, and I think we're able to segregate out um, less risk uh, for those that, uh, uh, you know, don't... Uh, uh, or that want to want to sleep at night. Uh, that's uh, you know we've we've I've known many people who have uh, you know lost farms, lost homes uh, 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 as a result of having an oversized position uh, in a market that went limit against them for for days and and days. Uh, I've also known uh, many individuals who have been on the right side of the market. Uh, when it, it it moves in their favor, uh, when we when we look at options, and we're simply looking at buying either puts or calls, uh, we have what we'd call a limited risk. I mean, we, it's, we're, we're purchasing an asset, uh, and you can only lose as much as as you put into it, rather than uh, more highly leveraged uh, uh, futures products. Um, let me go ahead and, and uh, define uh, what an option is. Uh, an option on a futures contract gives the option buyer the right but not the obligation to buy or sell a particular futures contract at a stated price at any time prior to the specified date. There are two types of options, puts, uh, calls and puts. Uh, a call option conveys to the option buyer the right to purchase a particular futures contract at a stated price at any time during the life of the option. A put option conveys to the option buyer 
uh, the right to sell a particular futures contract at a stated price at any time during the life of the option. Uh, and options on futures offer a, a wide range of opportunities. Uh, however, remember options are a speculative investment and should be treated as such. Even though the purchase of options on futures contracts limits your potential losses to the amount of the investment, it is nonetheless possible to lose your entire investment in a short period of time. And for investors who sell rather than buy options, or write premium, we call that, there may be no limit to the size of the potential losses. You have unlimited risk when you, when you write options. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the components of value. Uh, there's intrinsic value, and then there's time value. <clears throat> intrinsic value is ostensibly the amount of money that could currently be realized by exercising the option at its strike price and liquidating the acquired futures position at the present price of the futures contract. I'll, I'll spend some time going over that when we run through a weekly S&P option. Uh, the time value, uh, our options uh, have time value uh, you know, which has no intrinsic value. Uh, for instance, uh, time value is the part of the option premium that is out of the money. And, and the part of the option premium that's out of the money consists entirely of time. So as we're searching for options, and I'll discuss this when I pull up the option chain, uh, there are quite a few uh, out-of-the-money options. As a matter of fact, I think a lot of traders spend an awful lot of time uh, 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 buying uh, out-of-the-money options, those options that purely have time value. So what is time value? There, there are typically three components. Or from a scientific standpoint, there are three components of time value. It's one, uh, the time remaining until expiration and time value declines as the option approaches expiration. At expiration, it will no longer have any time value. So if an option is out of the money, it will have no value whatsoever. That's what we call worthless. Uh, the option will have expired worthless. And, and during a discussion of options, typically uh, uh, the descriptions that we're going to use are going to be based on what the value of a particular option is at expiration. Um, and when we talk about uh, at expiration, uh, something important to note is there, there are really two different types of options. I know I said calls and puts a little earlier, but there are American-style exercise options and European-style exercise options. And the majority of the options that we trade here in the U.S. domestic exchanges are American style exercise, which means that you can exercise them at any time during the life of the option, up until and including the expiration date. Um, it gives you quite a bit more leeway because there are oftentimes opportunities for you to offset your option before it expires and take advantage of the opportunity that that market presented to you and take a profit. We'll show you how to calculate break-even uh, a couple slides uh, down here. But back to the time value. Uh, I mentioned one of the three. Uh, the first was time remaining until expiration uh, has a value. So back to that one, the longer term that you have, the more time that you have, the more value it's going to have. Uh, number two will be the relationship between the option strike price itself and the current price of the underlying futures contract. Uh, the further option, an option is removed from being worthwhile to exercise, the further out of the money it is, the less time value it is likely to have. And, and the third component of, of uh, time value is volatility. The more volatile a market is, the more likely it is that a price change may eventually make the option worthwhile to exercise. Thus, the options time value and premium are generally higher in volatile markets, and the premiums tend to shrink and collapse in less volatile markets. When we get sideways futures markets, those option values become cheaper and cheaper and cheaper as the probability of a sharp move becomes less and less and less. So there's less interest in the option, essentially.
the next slide, you know, we're buying options. We get a strike price, you know, the premium and the risk. Uh, you know, the strike price is the price at which this particular derivative, whether it's a mini S&P weekly option or a soybean option or uh, S&P, say, at 2200 uh, would be a strike price, an example of a strike price, uh, a 2200 call, which is above the current market. Uh, if we're taking a look at bonds, uh, we may take a look at a, a 180 call, which is above the market, uh, a strike price of, of 180. Uh, and, and each futures contract uh, has different uh, characteristics, uh, different incremental characteristics as to the types of strike prices available. But there are usually plenty of strike prices to choose from. Uh, of which to uh, to invest in. Um, the, the, the premium again is is going to be uh, made up of what we just discussed, the time and or intrinsic value, which is the dollar value, and we'll run through the calculation shortly of 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 what it costs to participate uh, in either a call or a put. Uh, and the risk, if you're buying an option, is limited. It's limited to the cost or the premium of your option that we'll be searching for, uh, plus the commission and clearing and exchange and NFA fees. I think uh, we'll run into this down the road here, and we're going to use $6.25 as the cost of commission and fees, all inclusive. I think that's an, an important, particularly when we're using an example of a couple of commodities like the uh, 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 the soybeans that trade in quarter point increments, increments, we have an eighth of a point for commissions there, which is easy to calculate. And for the S and P's, we're going to have uh, 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 six twenty five two, which is also an eighth of a point, even though the futures don't, the underlying futures don't trade in those uh, smaller increments. It's a it's a it's an eighth or a half of uh, minimum fluctuation, which is twelve dollars and fifty cents, or 0.25. Um, uh, so, you know, the, the risk is limited when you're buying options to simply the cost of the premium plus your uh, uh, commission and exchange and clearing fees. Let's move over to an example. Uh, that I pulled up today uh, of the S&Ps, the September weekly options, and I've, I've decided to go with uh, a, a weekly option that has a little more than a month of time value left. Uh, if you can see my arrow here, uh, what I've got here is an OEW3 August 19, 2016 expiration. Uh, we've got uh, uh, a series of, and I'm going to, I don't know what size computer screen you all have out there, but uh, we'll try to move this up a little bit so you'll see it. And I'll pull up a live one in a moment. I'll switch screens. Uh, but for the purpose of this slide, uh, we've got uh, an S&P mini weekly option, and we've got the calls on the left, and we've got the puts on the right. And w what we've done is we've taken a look at the last price at the time this was taken this morning of 2147. I selected just so we can work through the math uh, a couple of strike prices. Uh, one's a call out of the money, one's a put out of the money about 30 points away from 2147. So we t I'm taking a look at the 2175 uh, call, uh, which is down here, 2175 call, 1650 bid offered at 17. Uh, the, uh, uh, the put side, we're taking the 2115, which is right over here, and we've got a 2050 bid and a 21 offer. Now, the interesting thing here, if I'm 30 points away to note, is that the 2175 call seems to be a little cheaper than the 30 point away 2115 put. Um, and that's going to give you a little idea about the market structure. There's probably 
a, a little greater likelihood that the market will be going lower based on the traders and the market participants at some point down the road. That's why the premium is a little higher uh, because we can go, uh, we're, remember we're at all-time highs here in, in the stock indices and I think today we made another one. Um, so uh, we do have some fervor to the upside uh, with the calls and we certainly have a lot more open interest up here with the calls uh, but the open interest again may be uh, short interest as much as it is long interest just like it could be over here on the put side but the puts are still more expensive than the calls let's go through the math the math here is 1650 bid offered at 17 if we're buying something you may know from your futures trading uh, that you can buy at the offer uh, so our calculation is based on buying at 17 points the the multiplier is 50 and uh, uh, so that would cost uh, 13, excuse me, that would cost $850 if uh, we add the $6.25 uh, 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 commission and fee, that would be, that would cost you $856.25 to uh, purchase this uh, 2175 call that's out of the money. Uh, that's the most you could lose on this particular option if it were to expire and you did nothing in between now and expiration on August 19th to offset that either uh, by uh, selling the option or by exercising it if it's in the money and offsetting the uh, incumbent futures position. Let's see. I seem to have lost my slides here for a moment on the left hand side. If I can roll up here. And I'm going to switch over to another screen here. And when I go to the screen, I'm going to show this one. Yeah. There we go. Appreciate your patience, folks. Yeah. Thank you for your time. So, if you can see the uh, my screen on the right-hand side here, my right-hand screen, this is eFutures International Software. Elon, can you see that? Okay. I'm going to pull up an option chain, much like the one that we saw slide presentation. I'm going to go up to trading, new window, ESU6, I'm going to hit enter. It automatically populates here with uh, what were serial options, the July 15th serial options are no longer available to trade, but we've got July 15th uh, end of week options right here. And we have, uh, you know, the market really hasn't moved that much from this morning. I think we had 21.47 on the, uh, on the slide and we got 21.46 right here. Let's take a look at those August 19th expiration options here and see how much if any the value has changed well uh, the market is in a halt right now between uh, 15 after the hour and 1.30 uh, Pacific time uh, 3.30 Central 4.30 Eastern and it'll be uh, uh, you know I think a really good example when the market reopens here at uh, in about six minutes 
you will see these bids and offers. In some cases, we see the offers being pulled here. Uh, no offers because there's a trading halt, and we only have last trades to go by in terms of valuation for the uh, for the options. We've got a bid of three here on the 2175 call and an offer of 17. What a wide spread. You certainly wouldn't want to throw a market order in a market that looked like this. But we'll see in about five minutes when the market reopens if these will tighten up again. Uh, but this is what it'll, the screen will look like after hours when we're taking a look at these options. Um, I'm going to switch and just, back over. And John, yeah, just ahead. for a quick second, go ahead and right right click on the twenty on the seventeen over there. On, on which one? The on the seventeen last quote for the twenty one seventy five. Okay. If, just to show how simple it is to buy, sell, and create an uh, an order ticket from the option chain. And again, this is the EDA Future software that does not have a monthly charge to it and is a very good alternative for some of the more expensive uh, option vehicles out there that charge you a few hundred dollars a month. So and just a small example. I didn't mean to confuse you, John. Go ahead. Continue. No worries. I was following Elon's instructions, and you can see that I added this particular strike price to my quote board. It appears down there, and from there I was simply able to right-click right here and add a depth of market display, uh, which pops up on my other screen. Let me drag it over. There you go. And you can buy and sell based on this uh, uh, or through this depth of market display. We've got a, uh, a bid and an offer. This is my demo, and uh, we do have a last price of 17. And you'll see that I let's see if it'll accept an order here. I'm going to put a bid in it. Uh, let's say 16 and a half. And yeah, make sure it's a, make sure it's a demo, John. Yeah, <laughs> that's the demo. <laughs> right up here. I got me covered. Thanks for the heads up there. It's always good to uh, also, double check. It's, it's interesting uh, to see the information that you get on the quote board, and that's nice volume that's traded on specific option, 2,300 contracts. That's very good volume for, for an option. Also shows you the op open interest, uh, as well as the change in price and explanation. This is week two, mini S&P, etc. So we're going to pull up this option chain again here. And it's ESU6. And we need to change the expiration date to uh, the one of our choice, which is uh, week three in August. I'm going to pull it down here a little bit. And I'm going to change the chart also. And I can just highlight right here in the middle of the chart and begin typing just with one click uh, the symbol ESU6 and click OK. And what was up here previously was a bond chart. And now I've got the uh, mini S&P chart up here with several indicators on there. LebEx indicator. Go back to the uh, option chain. And we'll pull up the ESU 6 again. And it popped up on my uh, other screen here. So let me go and uh, drag it over to you folks, please. There we go. And automatically populates with uh, three, three strike prices. Sometimes when you get a demo, uh, you'll have a limitation on the number of strike prices you can uh, you can view at once. So don't hesitate to call your contact here at Canon and have him reset your demo or her so that you can view as many strike prices as you need to. And I'm going to jump in one more one more time. Uh, and change the screen to me and show you something that even us as brokers sometimes will use, especially when we deal with options that we don't deal with often. I mean, we all know, everybody here knows that one mini S&P point is 50 bucks. 
and a soybean full point is fifty dollars. But there's times that you know I may myself wonder how much is a specific coffee option or a cotton option or a live cattle option is going for. So I just want to show you briefly uh, our source on our website uh, that will give you this valuation of options. Over here under education, free future quotes and charts. And I'm going to go and you know, look for any option that I want based on the market category. So let's say softs. And I'm going to look at coffee. And let's say I'm going to look at September coffee. I'm going to scroll to the right-hand side and click on the letter O for options. And even though it's really small on the screen right now because that's the setting I have, it will give you the calls on one side, the puts on the other, and then it will give you the actual premium. So right now, coffee's trading, what are we trading at it? Uh, 150. So 150 call option and 150 put option, and you can see the different values that they're going for as far as dollar premium, which is very, very nice, especially if you're not sure how much money you're spending. And I'm going to go ahead and switch the screen back to John. There we go. All right. Let's go back to the option chain here. This is fun because the market just reopened here. Now we're going to see these bid offer spreads tighten up for you. There we go. Let's pull this down. Let's get a number of uh, strike prices. 2175s right here. 2175 calls. We got a last trade of 17. Now you can see that the uh, the price, uh, the bids and the offers have tightened up all the way across the board, all the way up and down. We got a 15 and a quarter bid offered at 16. So this option here to purchase a 2175, if you were to buy one at the market, uh, you would pay 21, uh, excuse me, 16 points or $800 uh, plus. Uh, which is, uh, remember, 16 times 50, $50 times 16, $800, plus the $6.25 commission and, and fee. Uh, we're going to, uh, let's see, it's already added here to the quote board, as we showed you a little earlier. I'm going to go to the depth of market display up here. Uh, we're going to pull this over, and let's... See if I can grab the top of this. There we go. There it is. And we're going to put a bid in at uh, 16 and a half. And and uh, well, there's a price alert. Just on the green, yeah, right on the green, right on the yeah. green. There we go. And uh, you get the intrusive alert there that uh, is a confirmation, which is a safety measure. You can disarm that if you like, uh, if you're very confident when you place these orders. Uh, and we're going to send a, a buy order in there for a 2175 uh, weekly S&P call that expires August 19th at 16 and a half. Is that okay? Yes. Uh, order was rejection, rejected. Action not supported at this time. I guess they will not allow us uh, after hours on the demo to uh, at, at the clearing firm to uh, to place the trade. So, so John, there's a there's a question that is being asked. Uh, Assuming you got this option for 16 points and the market moves between between now and expiration another 50 points from here, uh, uh -huh. how would you get a rough idea of what the option will be going for, as far as the value? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer this based on your expiration date. If it's 50 points higher than where it is now based on expiration, uh, at expiration on August 19th, then the value of the option will purely be uh, intrinsic value since there will be no time value left. The, 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 the difficult part is to determine uh, uh, what the intrinsic value will be 
at any date in the future, and there are a number of option valuation programs out there that can provide that. But I will tell you this, the sooner that it happens, the more expensive your option will become, and if you're a buyer or long on the option, then the better off you're going to be. But if it's 50 points higher, and our option is 30 points from uh, where the market currently is, and that means it's in the money by at least 20 points, which 20 points means it would be worth $1,000 at expiration. So if you paid you know, $800 for this option now, which is 30 points out of the money, and at expiration it was trading 50 points higher, you know, the simple answer is that it'd be worth $1,000 or 20 points because it's in the money by 20 points. Right, right. And just, just to clarify, guys, that's, that's the big X is the time value and the volatility because the same move that happens, let's say, within the next four or five days, and the valuation of this option is going to be quite a bit different because of that extra time value. Thank you, Elon. That was a good question. All right, I'm going to switch screens and uh, go over to a break-even analysis, very similar to, uh, and maybe it'll address a little more clearly the question that you asked. Um, let's. Uh, Yeah, we're everybody good. see the uh, yeah okay good yeah. all right so buying an option if we uh, purchase the mini uh, S&P 2175 call at the offer of 17 uh, it's 850 dollars and assume the six and a quarter commission uh, total is is 856.25 here's a visual to the right and you can plug in a number of different numbers in here but and this is assuming that we're we're buying an out-of-the-money option, uh, out-of-the-money call, uh, strike prices above where the market currently is, or an out-of-the-money put, strike prices below uh, on a put uh, where, the, uh, where the market currently is. Uh, your loss potential is limited to the amount of your investment, in this case, 856.25. Uh, the break-even point, and here's the calculation at expiration, would require the futures price to be 2175, which is your strike price, plus the premium paid, or 2192 plus the six and a quarter commission, or 2192.25 to break even. Now, this this math is relatively simple, but it, it, it takes a, a, a little time to digest and commit to your memory, so that when you're trading the options, you break even on the fly when you're thinking about you know what it's going to take for the market to make money so when you when you do this calculating break even what I do is I think about it and go well, Jesus expiration is what's the likelihood of the market being above 2192.25 if it's at 21 you know 47 and if my analysis says geez I think it's going to be a 2250 or, or 2300 or some number much higher than my break even then I'll, based on my analysis, then I'll make the decision to go ahead and, and, and buy this option, which is a process that everybody who buys these calls goes through. They go through, and, and we'll get involved in the next webinar uh, in, in much more depth about you know what it takes to make those decisions. But right now, we're just talking about what an option is, what the costs associated uh, with options uh, are, and what the risks uh, uh, will be. Um, and, and again, you can you know, lose all of your premium here. Uh, rarely do we see premium being lost if you're buying it out of the money with uh, more than a month to go. It's remember, it's it's going to have time value in there, and that what that time value simply is a, is a calculation of is the probability of that strike price being in the money by expiration. And of course, intuitively, we would know that you know. The, the, the closer that strike price is to where the market currently is based on current volatility, the higher the probability is that that option will be in the money before expiration. Therefore, it's got value. Um, so how likely is it that between now and expiration this market will experience either greater volatility or will move in the direction of my strike is, is really a question that you're going to ask yourself before you decide to buy a put or a call.
and in the eFuture software, we we uh, spent a little time going over that. I know Elon uh, talked a little bit about that. Uh, well, we uh, uh, total uh, order entry. You can you can put uh, uh, stop orders in, good till cancel orders. You can bracket trailing stops, uh, which is appropriate for day traders and swing traders as well. Um, and, and of course, direct access uh, and pricing for options on futures. This trading platform is uh, has uh, no monthly fee. Uh, the only fee that uh, you'll uh, you'll incur uh, is the data uh, that the exchange charges, and that's true with any trading platform in, in, in futures. Which gives me a reason to jump in with one, one more uh, comment and then a question by Stephen. So the comment about E dash futures is it's it's really nice in a way that you can actually get what we call the top of the book uh, live data from the four major uh, CME exchanges, which is the NYMEX, COMEX, Globex, and CBOT, for three dollars per month, which is the only software that I know that does that. Most other softwares will require you to get the full depth of market, which will run you from fifteen dollars a month and higher. And then a question from by Stephen is can you exercise an out of the money option and that is a question for John and before John starts here's another question that says is there a free demo version so before I transfer the mic to John yes there is a free demo version it's on our website just go in there under e on our on canontrading.com and download or sign up for the free demo of e dash futures so can you exercise an out of the money option John yes Stephen uh, you certainly can but I don't know why you'd want to uh, if you're exercising an out-of-the-money option, what you're doing is you're paying for the right to uh, hold a futures contract, either a long or short, and uh, you're going to be uh, uh, taking uh, with it the uh, uh, the unrealized loss that's associated with that. That by virtue of exercising that, you will be assuming an unrealized loss for the open futures position that you will have uh, uh, acquired from exercising your out-of-the-money option. And you will also no longer be in a position where you will have uh, limited risk. You're now exposing your account to uh, unlimited risk. I hope that helps. I think I think we went over the the example with the mini S and P. I mean, unless you want to, John, I think we can skip the the bean option and just talk a little bit more about about close to the money, out of the money, and maybe just touch base into some of the next topics that we will be talking about, uh, which is the more advanced options. And those more advanced options uh, come by all sorts of fun names, like uh, you know, s s vertical spraddles and s calendar spreads, um, uh, box spreads, um, and they all uh, have different associated risks uh, with them. Uh, we we do like to use. I like personally like to use uh, uh, because they're simple. Uh, are vertical spreads, uh, call spreads, and put spreads, uh, bear put spreads, uh, bull call spreads, where we are simultaneously uh, uh, buying an option and selling an option, uh, buying a call and selling a call. And what we attempt to do when we are uh, engaging in those vertical spreads is simply capture a portion of potentially a large move uh, by buying a near the money uh, call and selling a farther away uh, from the money call or buying a near the money put if we anticipate a uh, sell off in the market or declining prices and uh, at the same time financing that expensive near the money call or put excuse me by selling a put uh, quite a ways away from the market um, 
and I look forward to presenting that. Uh, it'll probably be a little more animated than this time. Uh, I know that the uh, uh, you know the option category is not uh, uh, too sexy to talk about. There's a lot of small detail uh, that's important to uh, to understand and to grasp uh, before you uh, uh, decide to purchase uh, the options. But again, I, I, I implore you to. Uh, talk to a professional, talk to a, a broker who's been in the industry uh, for, for a number of years like we have here at Canon Trading uh, about your desire to use options not only by themselves but also as a hedge against maybe your day trading using weekly options, uh, uh, you know, buy some uh, inexpensive uh, uh, with uh, several days to go uh, expiration uh, on the put side to uh, help support and hedge a, uh, a day trading strategy where you're buying the dips or the converse would also be true and it's an inexpensive way to do that. Are there any other questions? Okay, and I'm back back on the mic again. I'm going to look to see if there's any other questions. Uh, is there enough liquidity on some of the commodities and grains to trade options on them? Uh, it's a good question, and there's a tremendous amount of liquidity in the majority of the grain options. Uh, the soybeans and the, the corn, actually, the most liquid. As a matter of fact, let's see if I can find a uh, – let, let's – I'm going to switch screens real quick and pull it – better than switching switching screens, I'm just going to drag, uh, drag this up over here, the trading platform. Let's pull up an option chain. And let's see what we get for, even though the market's closed, December corn, for instance. Let's see what we get there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then you see some, some strikes with 4,000, 5,000, 9,000 contracts. Look at the open interest. Open interest and then the volume. This is just volume for today. I mean, I'm looking at the four, four even call option. Looks like we had about 3,895 contracts traded or options traded. That's that's decent size. That's decent size. And and and, and this is this is for the new crop corn. This is the December corn. Uh, there are other option series out here too. Uh, here's a September 23rd option, which expires to the December futures contract. Which has you know some decent volume for those options that are out of the money a little bit here for the day, and some decent uh, open interest in those. But those are, you know, the 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 strength of uh, of these are uh, in the December, are the uh, are the December uh, uh, option series that expire November 25th to the futures contracts. Let's take a look at beans uh, really quickly, and uh, see what we get here. I bet we're going to see not quite as much volume as we do in the corn. But we'll probably see quite a bit, and we'll go to the November contract, ZSX six, November soybeans, and again we've got these uh, monthly options here. But let's go to the October twenty-first, uh, which is going to be more representative of the November futures contract, which again is uh, what we call new crop soybeans. Uh, the, the the crop that's currently growing uh, and is not yet harvested, and we've got a tremendous amount of open interest there. Uh, wheat, you're going to get a little less open interest in. Uh, let's take a look there. I mean, you get the idea. Yeah. And when, there, here, here's another pointer that uh, I was hoping you'll spend a couple of minutes on. Weekly mini S and P options is somewhat of an alternative for short-term trading. Okay. Let's uh, let's take a look here, real quick, at the weeklies, and you'll see how inexpensive the weeklies can be. 
and the reason the reason I'm bringing up this question is because more than a few clients in the past told me I know where this S&P is going to go and I'm usually right where it's going to be right around the close of the week yet I end up day trading in and out in and out and I and even though I know where the market is going and sometimes I'm right I end up somehow losing money and I think the weekly options doesn't have to be a substitute but it can be in addition to or at least something to consider if you have issues controlling yourself, if it's hard for you to get stopped out because the market goes up and down and you put a stop and then you get stopped out, uh, just buying outright calls or puts on the weekly S&P options could be a good alternative. Yeah, here's a uh, 2140 put right here, Elon. Six and a quarter bid offered at six and a half. That's $312.50 and we're what, five points out of the mm -hmm. money? Mm -hmm. and, they, and they expire on Friday in the afternoon. So this expire day Friday. So think about it. Most people would risk two, three, maybe six points on a single trade and you can just go in, some report comes up, you got stopped out with six points and you're done with this trade. Here you can buy this weekly S&P option and it gives you time all the way until Friday afternoon. And the way this market has been moving, who knows where, where it can be, but it can definitely make some large swings during those days. So I think that's definitely an alternative, uh, uh, something to consider. Here's an at the money. It's actually in the money, uh, 2150 put. If uh, you think uh, the upside is done, and how much you're going to spend for this? You're going to spend $600, you know, $550 for this, uh, rather than uh, uh, get chopped up in your in your day trading. Yeah. And you know, buy buy several of these, and and uh, they expire at the end of the day on Friday. This is. July 15th they expire which is a little different and always lean on your broker for don't don't hesitate to give them a call to find out when these options actually expire because if you get used to trading the weekly options and then you run into the serial option you run into uh, uh, the quarterly option expiration cycle they expire at, uh, at the open in the morning rather than the afternoon session and it's critical to adjust your trading strategy uh, to that because you lose one day on that quarterly expiration option cycle. Uh, like the September 16th will be expiring at what time? At 9.30 Eastern in the morning, 6.30 Pacific time. Yeah. Eight, yeah. Right. That's, what, what a, that's, that was a good topic and a good example that right there, that little, little knowledge that uh, use us, the brokers, to know because that can make a big difference if you're not sure if the option expires 6.30 in the morning when the stock market opens or right at 1 p.m. Pacific time when the market closes and there's actually a special settlement prices. So ask, use us, uh, learn. And while I scan for some more qu questions, I'm going to go ahead and take the screen from John and Liz. John, was there anything else you wanted to share on your screen? Uh, no, thank you very much, uh, folks, for, for tuning in. I hope uh, it was educational. And uh, don't hesitate to uh, reach out to us and ask any other questions. Maybe you'd like to see some other things uh, uh, discussed here. Uh, but uh, thank you very much for tuning in and having the confidence to, uh, uh, to check out Canon Trading. I look forward to uh, working with you in the future. Perfect. And there are a couple of questions that I think are, are, are worthy. Uh, first of all, there will be a recording of this webinar, and it will be available. We will post this webinar on our website, but that will take us a little bit longer. But the recording will be available in the next couple of days, and a broker can email it to you or you can contact us. And last question for the day before we thank John is how does the cost of, let's say, an ES future option compare with the cost of trading SPY options? Well, when you take a look at cost, I think you have to take a look at what each of the option controls. When we go back to nominal value, when you take a look at SPY, that's times 100 shares. Is that correct? I believe it is. I've been removed from the, uh, the securities industries uh, since 2002, uh, and I believe that's the way it goes. So the SPY option is, is really cheap. It's inexpensive what you get. Here, if you're buying one option, you're spending you know, $325, as we discussed with the uh, the weekly options that expire this Friday uh, for you know 650 paying 650 for something that's out of the money by uh, less than 10 points you know you have the ability to control $50 times the index you're controlling $107,000 worth of an asset I don't think the spiders are, 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 are valued at that once you have the ability to exercise the option I think the spiders are, are probably worth about 20,000 30,000 something like that so about one-fourth or one-fifth of the size 
So, uh, you know, we're comparing apples and oranges to some degree. Uh, and uh, I hope that answers your question. I, I think it does. I mean, obviously, we're biased with futures traders, so we're going to – I honestly think that uh, options on futures – have much more punch into them than options on equities, including SPY options. But like John says, I'm not a licensed uh, Series 7 broker, and John, it's been a while since he was a Series 7 broker, so we've been a little bit out of the loop. But that's, that's something that we can definitely discuss with you one-on-one -on -one and share an opinion and give a feedback. So uh, at this point, what I would like to do is say thank you to John Thorpe uh, for the very nice and wealth of information. I want to thank you guys. Thanks, for staying throughout the webinar and asking the questions and paying attention and visiting uh, visiting us and considering us if you're not a client. Uh, I wish everybody a great afternoon, good trading for the rest of the month, and we will send you an email with the recording of the webinar over the next couple of days. Uh, feel free to contact us with any questions, and thanks again. Goodbye.